How good is your scientific network? Do you know the right people to take your career to the next level? Is getting published standing between you and funding? Would you like to collaborate with the top scientists in the field of radiation research? You know, having a network is really important for a scientist, and a lot of it is, is you learn something at the university you're at, but that's not where you finish your career. That's the beginning. So it's nice to look at a world outside of your university and meet someone somewhere else. And sometimes that's where your next position comes from. When I was a student, I heard that it was a very good environment where to get uh, mentoring. And you could present your work without feeling intimidated. You know, for a young PhD student, at the beginning it's very intimidating to go to a meeting, present a poster or a talk. And I found the seniors were very approachable and very supportive. So that's why I joined back then. And nowadays, even though I'm working in Europe, and there is other societies to which I belong and uh, meetings I go to, for me, it's like, you know, to be back to the origins of radiation research when I come to the meetings. One of the values that is most important, I think, for the Radiation Research Society is its diversity. The Society was founded on the four principles, physics, chemistry, biology, and medicine. And that continues to be a foundation and a strength of the Society. We draw from all those fields, all those disciplines. The Society depends on the interactions of that very diverse community to be the Society it is. I also got the opportunity to see the young people. I had the opportunity to hire people. I have a dozen of postdocs who are now either faculty or senior faculty or senior scientists. The Radiation Research Society is a great place to meet all other scientists. I tell my students that I only know a few things, but I got a Rolodex and a bunch of names in there and I can call anybody in the world and just about get anything done. I want to get done scientifically because I've met so many people. Before, I was working in fields that were very, very biologically oriented. And so every day you talk to biologists and they come at it sort of all from the same angle. They're trying to understand what's happening at the cellular level or the molecular level. But in, in doing radiation research, what happens is you have physicists that actually can help you understand what might be going on. You have chemists that are working on the same way of thinking and the same problem that you are. And I found that to be exciting that you could pull all these things together. There's a great opportunity for you to actually meet with individuals who are doing groundbreaking research. And that's one of the things with the actual um, SIT meetings. The SITS program actually stands for Scholars in Training. It comprises everything from undergraduates, graduate students, postdocs, uh, other members that are in training positions and it provides them a forum in which they can interact with each other so they know they're not alone in this graduate school or training process, whatever they're going through. I like it very much and uh, I like uh, this uh, meeting because uh, there are many, many young people, so unlike the uh, different meetings, yeah, I like best. Mentors definitely are important every step of the way. I've been very lucky. People have read a lot of things that I've done and helped me get grant funding, you know. Even still, you, you can talk to people about different techniques and they'll help you through it or they'll help collaborate with you. To further your work and collaborate with the top scientists in the field of radiation research, visit radres.org.